Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week we're going to be making our gravity attacks able to make these bones rise up out of the floor. And we're also going to be coding in a way to create these red warning boxes to warn the player they need to jump out of the way before that happens. So without any further ado, let's get to the code. So first things first, head into your projectile sprite. And I've done a bit of rearranging of where these codes are on the screen. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an overview and a bit of a reminder of what everything does. So remember, this is our screen shake code. Over here is our forever loop. This is where we put all of the attacks that we want to happen. Speaking of attacks, our first line of attacks are all of the projectile attacks. And the second line are all of the gaster attacks. Down here, I've put the when I start as clone code. And over here is our gravity slam, which is what we'll be working on today. So in order to test this properly, what we're going to need to do is pull out all of the attacks that are in your if mode equals evade. Just put them off to the side for now. We need to put four specific attacks in here, and then we're going to make some changes to our gravity slam attack. Go to my blocks and get out four gravity slams. Put them all here. We want a gravity slam up, down, left, and right. Then right click right here on define gravity slam, click edit. Now to make things nice and easy when we're making gravity slams, as always, I'm going to be adding in some letters that describe our inputs. So to describe our direction input, let's click right here where it says slam, put a space afterwards and a D so that we know that this input is the direction input. Then let's add text, add a label, and we're going to type in B question mark. This is going to be for an input. So let's click on add an input. And this name of this input is bones question mark. If we type something into here, we're going to have those bones that rise up out of the floor. And then finally, go text add a label and we'll type in W. This is gonna be for weight. Then click on add an input and type in weight. Okay, that all seems pretty good. Let's press OK. So as you can see, our four attacks now are a little bit more easy to understand what these inputs are for. What we're going to do is we're going to click on weight here and type in two to each of these weights. Now have a look at your define gravity slam attack. Let's go to control. Let's get a wait one seconds. Let's put it on the very bottom of the code here and grab this wait input and put it in our wait one seconds. Now we're going to put something into our bones input to make sure that we're turning on the bones component of our gravity slam attack. Now you can type anything that you want. I'm just gonna type in Y for yes. And now we've got these four attacks set up the way we need them to be. We've got each of the four directions, we've got the bones all turned on, and we've got the weight set to two seconds. Let's focus in on the gravity slam. Now, we already point the projectile in the direction that we have gravity then go, and we're going to use that to our advantage. But first of all, we need to create a new costume for our attack. So go to costumes, and let's paint a new costume. So I'm making this a bone, but you can make it a spear, or anything else long and pointy. Make sure it's not too short because we're going to make a row of these that are all going to line up. Like you can see these bones line up here and they're all going to come up out of the ground at the same time. Make sure that you name this costume. I'm just going to call it gravity and don't forget to make sure this costume is centered let's head back to the code so first things first let's go to looks and get out switch costume to gravity 
and let's get out go to front layer. Now we'll probably change this, but having it set to front layer is going to make the next few steps make more sense because we're going to be actually seeing what it is that we're coding step by step. Now, another thing that we need to do is make sure that the projectile is going to be in the very middle of the screen. So let's go to motion and get out, go to X and Y, put that there. Now we want to set the X to zero to make sure it's in the middle. And normally we'd set the Y to zero, but remember that our box for playing is actually a little bit lower. So I'm going to say minus 40. That's about the center point of the Gaster Circle attack that we used before. Um, you can change this Y number a little bit if it makes more sense for where your box is in your game. Now we're going to create another my block to contain that bone attack component of our gravity slam. And the reason why we're creating another my block to contain it will be clear later. So for now, let's go to my blocks and click on make a block. Let's call this bone attack for gravity slam. I know that's very long, but at least when you look at it, you know exactly what it does. Press OK and put this right here. And then we're going to go to Control and get out Create Clone of Myself and put it underneath that Define. Now we're going to look a little bit lower on our Gravity Slam attack. Pull this weight down and in this gap, put an if then. Connect that to the bottom, then go to operators, get out a not equal to. Then get out your bones and put it here and delete this 50. We've used this before, remember? This says if the bones input is not empty. So if we type anything into our bones input, like for example, a Y, like I did, it's going to do the bones attack. If we leave it empty, type nothing into it, then it won't do the bones attack. Then we're going to get out a my block, our bone attack for the gravity slam. Let's actually see what that looks like, shall we? What we should be able to see is the attack spawning and then disappearing. And as you can see, the bone is facing in the correct direction each time. So that's very good. So we've got our bone facing the floor that we want it to eventually rise out of. That's very good, that's a good start. Let's move it towards that floor and see what it looks like. Let's get out, move 150 steps and put it right here. Let's have a test and see how far the bone goes. Now I've run into a little bit of a problem. It turns out my box is not perfectly square. It's wider than it is tall. It's more of a rectangle. And what this means is that the bones on the left and the right, as you can see, are nice and close to the box. But look at these ones on the top and the bottom. They're actually really far away. Now, if you already have a perfectly square box, just make sure that you find the nice midpoint, make sure that your move is set to an amount where the bone is nice and close to the edge of the box, and you can probably um, leave the code as it is. But for everyone else like me, we're going to make some changes. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Let's move that up there and get this move 150 steps. Let's duplicate it until we have four of them. And let's put each of these four into one of these if direction equals. Make sure that you put it after the point in direction. because we need to make sure it's pointing first. And then while we're looking at our code run, we can change these numbers. Okay, so I'm happy with the right and the left. But let's move the up a little bit closer. Let's move that down to, should we try 110? How close is the up now? 
Okay, that's a little too close. Let's move it to 120. And let's have a look. Oh, maybe it's a little too close still, but not by much. Let's say 125. So now let's have a look at the down one. Let's try 130 steps for down. Okay, so the up, that's quite nice. And the down, oh, it's still a bit far away. Let's try 125. Yep, left is good. Right is good. Up is fine. And down, that's close enough, I think. Let's go and focus on the bone attack. So I'm going to leave the game running and we're going to build this attack up step by step so we can see what it is that each line does. So let's get out a turn clockwise, which is the first of the two turns. And let's turn 90 degrees clockwise. Then after that, get out move 100 steps. And what this should do is have the projectile turn to the side and move to the end of the row. That's looking good. Now let's get out another turn 90 degrees clockwise and it should face the projectile back at the box. That's looking pretty good there. Then let's go to control, get out a repeat 11 and put it around our create clone. We need to build out the rest of the row. To do that, let's go to motion, get out a turn clockwise 90 degrees. And you'll see we've got some cool little crosses happening now. Get out, move 20 steps. And then get out, turn anti-clockwise, 90 degrees. And you can see what's happening now is our individual projectile. It goes to the end of the row. It creates a clone of itself. And then it turns, moves, turns, creates a clone, turns, moves, turns, creates a clone, and does that all the way down. And so we've got this cool effect now and we can see that all of these bones are facing in the correct direction. And now here's the answer for why we created this define bone attack for Gravity Slam as its own my block. We're going to right click on it, we're going to click on edit, and we're going to click on run without screen refresh. And now all of the bones will appear at the same time, which is important if we want them all to move at the same time. Speaking of making the move, let's go and do that now. Go looking for your when I start as clone code. Go all the way to the bottom. Now grab this repeat 10 change ghost, and move that down. What we're going to do is we're going to right click and duplicate this if costume name equals wave. And we're going to pull this out so that we've got if costume name equals gravity. Remember to spell this correctly. Spell it the exact same way you spell this costume here. Now we're going to go to control, get out a wait 0.5 seconds, get out a repeat 10, Go to motion, get out a move three steps, then duplicate this repeat and make it move minus three steps. So this 0 0.5 second wait is the wait that allows you to jump out of the way from the rising projectiles. Repeat 10 move three is how far and how fast they rise out of the ground. If you change this move, make it larger or smaller, you will change the speed. And if you change this repeat, you'll change how far they go at that speed. 
Um, obviously, try and keep this the same as this. And if you want to get experimental and a bit complicated with it, feel free to tie these to a variable. If you want to have different types of gravity attacks, whereby the bones can come up further. Now, there's only one nice little touch we need to make, and that's to head back up to our define gravity slam and change this go to front layer to change to go to back layer. And now we should have something that looks pretty authentic. Yeah, excellent. We've got these bones nicely rising up out of the ground. This looks very good. One thing we should probably do is now that we have a way of turning our heart into the blue soul, we should make it so that we can turn it back into the red soul. And this is actually very nice and easy. Go to events and get out broadcast. I'm gonna put it right here in my attacks Then click on the broadcast. Let's make a new message and call this red soul. So when you're making your attacks here, just put a broadcast red soul whenever you want your heart to go back to the red soul and be able to move around without any gravity. And then go to your heart sprite, get out a when I receive red soul. Nice and easy. We just need a switch costume to red. Done. So actually, I think we're going to leave the red warning rectangles for next week. So as always, you can subscribe and ring the bell to see when that episode is ready for you. And let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, or if you would need any help with your project. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.